What if I told you that a few simple tweaks to your retirement plan could save you hundreds of thousands of dollars in taxes? It sounds too good to be true, but it's not. Today, we're diving into some of the best strategies to save big on taxes and maximize your retirement savings. What could you do with an extra hundred thousand or more during retirement? Maybe it's that extra trip each year, more dining out, or just more peace of mind knowing that you've got a financial cushion. Taxes are complicated and retirement planning can be overwhelming. I get it. But whether you're already retired or planning to retire soon, don't worry, your favourite Scotsman is here again to reveal the top five tax saving strategies that can keep more of your hard earned money in your pocket and stick around until the end for a bonus tip that you probably haven't even thought of. Let's do it, shall we? The first one is a big one, income splitting. Probably heard of it, but what exactly is it and how exactly does it work? Let's look at a fairly simple example here with Jim and his wife Janice. Jim is currently making 100 grand a year. Janice has an equally important job, tending house and home, which sadly doesn't come with a salary. We are assuming Jim and Janice live in Ontario. As we can see here from the TurboTax calculator, Jim's pre-retirement annual taxes tally up to a cool $22,427. Now, fast forward to retirement and assume that Jim and Janice want the same 100 grand a year in income. Lucky for them, they can split their income if they're wise to it. So let's bring up the TurboTax example again. For simplicity, we're going to assume it's a straight 50 grand each. You can see here that the tax on 50 grand of income is $7,143. If you multiply that by two, that gives a total tax of $14,286, which is over eight grand in tax savings compared to when Jim was working and reporting all of the 100,000 himself. In this example, Jim and Janice are eight grand a year better off in retirement than they were pre-retirement, all because of income splitting. That could amount to $240,000 over a 30-year retirement. Do note that for the purpose of this example, I've used a fairly basic calculator that doesn't factor in any deductions or credits. There's several potential credits available to seniors like the pension credit and the age credit, which could reduce the tax bill further. I'll leave a link to this calculator though so you can have a wee play about with it yourself. Keep in mind that income splitting is generally only available to those that are age 65 or over. Although some pension income can be split from the age of 55. A workplace pension would be an example of this. You can also only split up to 50% of the pension income. And a word of caution, income splitting is not something that just automatically happens. First and foremost, making sure you and your partner are filing your ta tax returns together as spouses is, is very important. You know, that, I mean, that might seem obvious, but I've come across a number of instances where spouses file returns separately. Typically, it would be second marriages or spouses that come into the relationship with a significant amount of assets and want to keep things separate and, and private. I mean, that, now that's totally fine, but just be aware that you're leaving potentially hundreds of thousands on the table. Another cautionary note, if you file your taxes yourself, double check and triple check your tax return before you submit it. Our annual tax return reviews for clients will often highlight several instances where income splitting has been missed. This leads us nicely into the second strategy for the day. If you aren't thinking about spousal RSPs, then you probably should. As I've just mentioned, you can only split up to 50% of the pension income, but a spousal RSP allows you to shift 100% of the RIF income into the hands of the lower income spouse, which offers greater flexibility for income planning in retirement. Another advantage, if you're over the age of 71, then you're no longer eligible to contribute to your own RSP. However, you can make a spousal RSP contribution on behalf of a spouse under the age of 71, as long as RSP contribution room is available. One thing to look out for though, spousal RSPs are subject to attribution rules. That's basically a fancy way of saying that any withdrawals made in the first three years after a contribution is taxed in the hands of the higher earning spouse, which likely defeats the purpose of what you are trying to do in the first place. The next strategy has two parts, one for couples and one for both couples and singles. Let's start with the couples. When you roll over your RRSP to your RIF, you have the option to have the annual minimum payment calculated based on your age or based on your spouse's age. Let's look at an example. We've got Jack and Trish. 
Jack is 71 and has to convert his RRSP to RIF before the end of the year. If Jack selects his annual payment to be calculated based on his age, he will have to take out 5.4% of his RIF, uh, which is currently valued at just shy of 600 grand. This is an estimated annual payment of $32,400. Jack and Trish don't really need that much though. They've got business income that is more than enough to keep them going for the time being. Jack can't avoid having to take a payment from his RIF next year, but what he can do is select to have the minimum amount calculated based on Trish's age. Trish has only just turned 60, so the minimum amount is calculated based on a much lower percentage, 3.33%. Now 3.33% of 600 grand is 19,980 bucks. So instead of having to take out 32,400, Jack has to take out 19,980. Given Jack's ongoing business income, he is in the 50% plus tax bracket. But by selecting Trish's age for the RIF calculation, Jack has managed to keep over $6,000 in his RSP invested and growing. He can then draw that out in a much lower tax bracket once his business income is wound up. The second part of the strategy is for everyone, and it's pretty simple. If you don't plan to take your RIF payment and spend it on day-to-day -day living or fun stuff like vacations, but instead keep it invested within your overall portfolio then take your RIF payment at the end of each year. There's absolutely no point in taking the payments early in the year, investing the proceeds in your non-registered account and generating taxable income on dividends and interest when you can keep the funds growing tax deferred in your RIF until you have to take them out at the end of the year. Before we move on, if you're finding this information helpful and want to ensure that you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit that good old subscribe button. Next up on the best ways to reduce taxes in retirement is one that might seem counterintuitive. Don't have too much in your RRSP. Too often, the default in Canada is to contribute to your RRSP because that's what you were told to do when you were younger. Remember though, every dollar that you take out your RRSP is taxable. So having too much in your RRSP in retirement can put you into a position where mandatory minimum withdrawals push you into an even higher tax bracket are even into the old age security clawback range which starts at just under 91 grand a year for 2024. Let's look at an example. We've got Jane here who is a government worker and is retired with a defined benefit pension. Lucky lady. Jane collects 70,000 a year from her pension. When you add in CPP and OAS this takes her very close to the OAS clawback range. Jane has about 400,000 in her RRSPs, which works out to a minimum withdrawal each year of about $20,000. With an income of over 110,000 a year, this pushes Jane well into the clawback range. All of this was avoidable with some planning. Look, I get it. A nice tax refund every April always seems like a wee bonus. But if making more RRSP contributions is gonna negatively impact you down the road, then consider contributing to a TFSA if you have the room or a non-registered account. You don't have to report anything you withdraw from a TFSA as income and you only report the dividends, interest or capital gains earned in a non-registered account. Having a good mix of RRSP, TFSA and non-registered funds instead of everything in an RRSP can reduce your tax bill by thousands in retirement and ultimately leave you with more dollars in your pocket to play with. Do you think that you have too much in your RRSP? What's your strategy for managing it? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Now, moving on to the final strategy for today's video. The Guaranteed Income Supplement, or GIS, offers over $12,000 tax-free annually to low-income seniors over the age of 65. If your sole income source is old age security, or it potentially could be your sole income source, then you may want to listen a little closer for the next minute or two. I'm not suggesting for a second that you try and live on OAS and GIS alone. Unless you're extremely frugal, you are likely going to need some other access to funds. A well-stocked TFSA is a good option as taking funds out of a TFSA to supplement your living expenses is not counted towards the GIS calculation. You could consider cashing in some RRSPs before you hit 65 or contribute to RRSP before 65 and use the deduction later for maximum GIS. Another option is to tap into a secure credit line tied to your home for extra income. Although with the way the interest rates have gone over the past couple of years, that's a little less favorable than it once was. A couple of key items for this strategy. Delay RSP to RIF until 71 and CPP until 70. 
And as an added bonus, remember that deferred CPP till 70 means 42% more for life. While postponing RSP conversion lets it continue to grow. As you've seen today, even just minor tweaks can amount to hundreds of thousands of dollars more in your pocket over the course of retirement. If you're unsure about how to go about implementing any of these strategies that we've covered, ask your financial planner what makes sense as part of your overall plan. Of course, if you don't have a planner, head over to the link in the show notes and schedule an introductory call with us. Whether or not you are become a client of ours, now, our goal is to see more families take control of their finances. We can always suggest alternative services or advisors who may meet your specific needs. Don't forget to hit that old like and subscribe button and if you enjoyed today's video, you will love this next one on RSP and TFSA income strategies.